on the table, we are checking in with Transformers Legacy. It's been a while since Transformers has been on the table, but as soon as I saw Laser Optimus Prime, I had to check these out. Hey everyone, thank you for watching Squirrel Stampede, much appreciated, and I am Dan, and we have a few figures from Transformers Legacy to look at. Optimus, Blaster, an Insecticon, and a small little hot rod. Interesting character selection with these, especially the Laser Optimus Prime, something from my earlier past, and then Blaster is always amazing. So, lots to transform, let's get right to these amazing bots. Squirrel, Squirrel Stampede! Stampede. Let us start the day with Laser Optimus Prime, Leader Class, Transformers Legacy, and I believe in the Generation 2 style, as he has the tanker trailer. Inside the box you will find a Prime packaged like this, with very little plastic waste. And there we have Laser Optimus Prime in vehicle mode. I always like when they start in vehicle mode because it's much easier to go from vehicle to robot than it is robot to vehicle usually. Pretty good scale with this one too. Scaling really close to my beloved Transformers Generation 2 Optimus Prime. Optimus, you really need to go to the car wash, yeah. Looking good though, these two could definitely go together on a convoy. So good detail with this one, you can see the flames are around for the Generation 2 Laser Optimus Prime with the gasoline or milk or Cheetos gas tank. Can you place Cheetos in there? I don't think so. Maybe when they're in their liquefied form. Me Grimlock love cheese puffs! No, Grimlock, wait! Oh no! Oh. Scruffy's not gonna like that. And there's some good truck movement here. You can actually drive around, do some cookies with Prime, so I enjoy the vehicle mode on this one. Pretty well done. Couple accessories here. We have a sword, which you can place underneath the cab, and his shield, which I believe you can place underneath the hitch. But now we're gonna try to transform this guy according to these nice and easy instructions of a few simple 30,000 steps. We'll begin our day with this trailer, which just removes like so. Does it have a little trailer stand, by the way? Oops. Well, I think I've already started to transform it. So yeah, step one, they already want us to place it up on its backside and lift this part up. That's right, gold mecha squirrel, just like that. So we're gonna flip this up and around, and I even see like a little fork weapon or something already there. Then these sides are going to violently <laughs> flop down along with a little ramp. So lesson to be learned, do not stand under this part. Okay, now here is what we like to call flipping this thing around this way, and then rotating in it away that makes this whole gigantic thing fall down into this sort of weird repair crane. Did I get that right? Maybe some more folding. This probably folds down and then this rotates back up and now our crane is going the other direction. Is that a crane or is that a blaster for a smaller transformer? I wonder. I know I have the cannon on top now, that feels about right, and it rotates back and forth. That's a pretty nice little feature. And as for this, it's like both a laser gun and a little repair bot for Prime. We have a location on this side for the sword. I believe it's going to fit into these little notches right there. Yes, it does. And over on this side, we have a spot for his shield. I believe it just clips in over here. So as for trailer accessories go, this one's pretty good. Sometimes they open up to really do absolutely nothing or just look very odd. I feel like there's something going on here with a little protection tower and the whole tower does rotate back and forth. So it's gonna be something extra for your Prime to use as a base. But we're not here for his tanker trailer, Cheetos trailer. We're gonna go in with the big one here, the big guy, Optimus Prime. Laser Optimus Prime and we are going to figure out how to transform this one. So to begin, we are going to flip up his lower step-up panel. And done. Looking great, Optimus Prime. Thank you. No, that's not done at all. Hang on. Step two, we're gonna open up his feet. That's always one of my favorite parts because it's usually the easiest. 
Now he can stand. If we can get him this direction, step three involves cracking back this whole giant torso piece. Step four, we'll flip up his forearms, maybe that's what those are. Five, we're gonna rotate around this way, and we are going to chunk up his cab even more. Now six, we're gonna do a little dance. Do do do, do do do. I call this the Optimus Primal dance because Primal has that signature feet spin. And then we're gonna rotate the whole thing around again. Are you getting dizzy yet? I'm getting dizzy. And pulling out his front windscreen. It's gonna go flipping down. Now things are gonna get really awkward for Prime. So step eight is already done somehow. The little gas tank things actually were supposed to be out earlier in uh, truck mode, but they were already in. I don't know if I did that or if, or if they were like that when I opened it up. Now Prime, would you like a haircut? To give Prime a haircut, we're once again going to spin this around this way, and we're going to split his head in half. Ugh. That's actually not his head, obviously. So I think what they're trying to tell me in step 10 is I've got to pull these out a little more. There's some interesting beamage going on in there. Is that a word, beamage? I am typically not your Transformer reviewer, so bear with me. So you pull out those arms a little bit and then you're going to raise them up on their ends like so, I believe. This gives you that signature look of his shoulders that we see with the laser, laser Optimus Prime. In steps 12 and 13, we're going to start to pull out his front fake cab somehow. And that's not how you do it, that's how you break it off. Oh, I see, it flips down from underneath. That makes so much more sense. So there's his fake front chest, which I just keep breaking off. Mine is a little bit squirrely. This piece really wants to keep popping off, but I think we've got it now, finally. And there is a matrix of leadership under that windscreen. Then we're going to lift these up more, maybe? I think we're just trying to give room for the arms to swing around. And so if we rotate back this way, we can start finding those arms in here. Oh, I think I finally see Prime's head in there too. This is the part of transformation that's always just the best. And we will flip up that head too, if there's room. I think you just gotta keep maneuvering those shoulder pieces around. Step 17, inside the cab piece, there's something we need to flip up somehow. How do we even get that? It's just like way embedded. You're going to have to activate your transforming fingernails to get that one to go out. And then I really, I really don't know what's going on in step 18. It's a mess. Hello, step 18. But in step 19, we flip up these side panels. And now with his side flaps up in step 20, we should be able to chunk down his whole body on top of that somehow. I don't really see the placement yet though. I guess it's more of a soft fit than it is a hard fit, but once you get those sides locked into the top, then place down his front chest there. Now for step 22, 23, you can kind of position the arms a little bit better. Uh, which way do they go? There's like a hundred different ways they can go. And we could probably find his uh, fists in here eventually. Ah, they're underneath these little coverings. Yay, we found his hands. There they are, nice classic blue, gotta like that. Let's see, where's this one? How did I do that? I just kept rotating and eventually something rotated out. Ah, there we go, there's another blue hand. Yeah, we got him. We've got something going on here. Do a little dance. Rotating around to the back again, we've got to fix up that cab piece. We're gonna flip up that windscreen so it attaches nicely so to his back. Everything is comfortably fitting, I'm liking that. And swinging back around step 25, 26, we're actually the hand rotation out, so we got that going already. 28, we have to make sure we have these uh, shoulder pad things going down. So I think the first thing I need to do is get actually my shoulders locked in. And then I can place these down a little bit more over the top. It's like he's carrying two giant stereos on his shoulders. Step 29, there's something with his knees. Yeah, that was already done at some point. These go down like so. And at step 30, we can finally break those legs apart. It took 30 steps to get to that point. And there we go with a somewhat clumsy transformation of Optimus Prime, but actually a fairly solid Prime 
I think both versions, both the vehicle and robot, are looking good. There is very little clumsiness going on with them once transformed. Even with these huge shoulders on top of Prime here, articulation is looking really good. We can rotate his head around. It's a little bit tight as it falls off and it is on a ball joint. So just place back on uh, shoulders, move about and rotate and hinge out. We've got elbows, his blue hands rotate a little bit. There might be some waist rotation there and there is, that is perfect. And of course we've got hips and they kick out. They really have a lot of mobility there and knees and nice sturdy footprint there to stand on. So great, great work with the hinging on all his movable parts. Now to weaponize him a tad, you take out your trailer again and this piece on top of the trailer is actually removable and you can use that as a extra for Prime here. He can hold on to that or you can place onto his back. There's plenty of little extra spots for these accessories which is a lot of fun for him. You can even place them down here on his leg or even up here on his speakers for great dance moves. I think Blaster and this Prime are going to get along really well. I keep calling this his shield when in fact it is more of his power axe, his Energon axe. So we can use this transforming the stick out to hold onto and mine for birch trees and our sword over onto this side. And there we have our Laser Optimus Prime. I don't see his Buzz Lightyear laser yet, but that's what it is. I think it turned out pretty well. Do these flip open? What do these do, by the way? You can flip open his stereo chambers, and oh my gosh, look at these. Wow, extra stereo chambers. That is so cool. and almost forgot his matrix. I believe to get into that, you just flip up his windscreen and there it is, removable. Let's see if we can really make him weak. Oh, I dropped, oh, and you stepped on it. Oh, that's awful, but there it is. We've got our matrix inside. So pretty impressed by that. Wait, which direction does it go? The, the open tab on the top. So yeah, that's a nice little painted matrix piece. Let's get that back inside you though. And there we go. So if you like the Transformers Universe Legacy characters, Laser Optimus Prime is for your collection right there. So now that we know a little bit about Laser Optimus Prime, let's check out another Transformers Legacy, changing the station to Autobot Blaster and Eject. Blaster, another classic G1 character in my favorite book. I mean, you just can't rag on Blaster, he's awesome! Over on the back of the box, we have Autobot Blaster with 20 steps of transformation. Inside the box, there we have Blaster and Eject, plus Blaster's Blaster. Blaster, usually one of those Transformers that is really pretty easy to produce and look good in both robot and uh, item, not really vehicle form. We're going to go with a radio cassette player form. Always a fun bot to look at. Proportioned pretty well to Prime here. Prime is a good shoulder higher. Well, maybe because his shoulders are super tall. They're actually pretty well scaled head to head there. So they'll make a good combo team on your shelving. Articulation is looking pretty good too. We've got all sorts of movement here. Head rotation, shoulders, elbows. Of course, because of transformation, you can move those wrists in a little bit. I wonder if there'll be waist rotation. There is, look at that, a little bit of waist rotation. That's pretty nice, not always given. Then we've got hips that you can kick out and more inner hips and knees. Oh, you can even kind of push these speakers in a little bit. I think that's just how it's built though. And uh, some toes. So great articulation for positioning on this guy. Of course, you can place your blaster up there. Blaster's blaster up onto his hand. And that is looking pretty terrific. And then, of course, we've got his bot eject in cassette mode. What is a cassette, I wonder? So for placing eject inside blaster, one of these buttons should open up the tape deck. I believe it's just this one off to the side. Oh, it's just the whole panel. Sometimes they'll hide it in one piece and then we can place eject on in and keep him stored inside. Now we can go on to full transformation of blaster. So let's start by reversing over to the back side here and we are going to pull away this back panel here and we are going to hide his head. 
Then we're gonna rotate back around. I guess we don't need to have him holding onto his blaster. And we will try to raise his arms up like so, I believe, something like that. And then we'll want to rotate them around like so. And then we're going to rotate these fists down and around under. That's different. I thought they were going to go inside. Interesting. Then we rotate these flaps around. Okay, I guess I can see that. Step eight, we'll pull them down. Step nine, his speakers actually rotate around. I did not notice that. Look at that. We can actually have them rotated to a grid feature, which I suppose looks more like a stereo. I don't know. We'll see as we go. So that's why there was a little bit of movement earlier. These little speaker circles. What do you call those? Rotate. Step 10, we'll flip up his toes, making him a little bit harder for him to stand now. Less stability. Step 11, we're going to flip his leg section all the way around. Interesting things afoot with a step 12 as we are going to rotate, open up these panels down on his legs here. They open up and we're going to raise these little extra flange pieces that are hidden. And those will then rotate this whole structure, I think. I think we have that right. Step 15, we're going to flip up this little waste panel. He now has a beverage tray to work with and a lot of things going on for step 16. We are going to somehow bend all this structure down, snapping into his former arms, laying him down like so. Step 17, the beverage tray goes back down and locks the legs into place. Step 18, the most radical of the transformation, these Full side panels are going to flip in. A little bit tight on one of those sides. Then over around to the back again. We're going to lift up his handle pieces. And rotate them in. And combine them together. And we can even store his blaster blaster over onto the back here. In between these two Lego head like pieces. And then rotate back around and we've got Blaster transformed. Well, that went pretty well. I think he looks better on the front. We've got little dials. And the speakers are now inside these little lines here. Those are different. And over to the back, kind of clumsy back there. A lot of things going on, but I suppose some radios may look like that too. So pretty good overall, good scale. And I think it will transform quicker and quicker the more it loosens up. Real quick, let's take a look at Eject. Kind of in a cool translucent blue here for Eject and a quick transformation. How are we going to do this? We'll start by pulling out his legs. And we have Eject transformed. Always a fun addition to both Blaster and Soundwave, all the different little cassettes that you can place inside them. So good times with Blaster. Keep an eye out if you are a fan of the cassette radio builds of yore. We keep going down smaller in size, but I had to check out a Decepticon, and here is Kickback, one of the Insecticons, actually. It's a rare treat to get to an Insecticon. They were so big that one year. Over on the back of the box, we have about 14 stages of transformation. I think this one will prove to be very interesting. Inside the box, we have a very reflective Kickback, small weapon piece, two very shiny purpley wing covers, I suppose and instructions for transformation. This one is really fun to see. I have very few Insecticons in my collection. I think I have a few G1s in a special box that I leave inside, and that's about it. So this is new. Kickback has two cool antennas coming from his head there, a little softer rotation on the shoulders, elbows, and well, maybe a double elbow in there possibly. Uh, wrists over there are probably just going to hinge down in maybe. Uh, no waist rotation, but good, good leg movement with this hips and knees and feet. So a lot of great positioning with both or all of these today have been fantastic in the positioning department. Now what is kickback again? I think grasshopper like. I see grasshopper going on. So we're gonna transform into a grasshopper or hopper of grass sorts. Stage one, we're going to make sure his wings are flipped down by his sides. Oh, I suppose if you wish, you can have these up during robot form. I didn't think about that. That's kind of an obvious look. And look how shiny those are. They're really reflective. Some very nice transparent pieces on there. 
I hope they don't yellow over time. So you can have those up. I had those down for the most time there. I didn't, I don't really know why. Maybe because it was just packaged easier like this. So there we go with stage one. I'm running short on time. So let's just do a quick transformation overall. And I think we've got it. It's a little bit buggy. It feels a little bit more like he's just laying down as a robot, but I can kind of see a grasshopper in there, don't you think? It's a little tricky too because it's black and not green. Then if you wish, you can place over these wing covers onto the wings. For a pretty impressive looking Insecticon now. I like this one. This is pretty fun and different. Again, I have rarely get to an Insecticon, so it's a new treat, a special treat for me today. Just gotta position these legs around a little bit. They're a little bit loose, but he's sure classic Decepticon with that classic Insecticon, Decepticon look. Purple, black, gold, nicely done. Not much time left, but there is one more legacy to look at real quick. We've got a small scale size of Autobot Hot Rod. Inside the box, we have a small scale hot rod transformed into robot mode with instructions. This one might be a perfect companion for your Prime, your Laser Prime, as Rodimus can sit over here, or Hot Rod, I don't want to call him Rodimus, can sit over here and help repair Optimus, kind of be his little repair buddy. So, a quick transformation yields surprisingly pretty quick with this one. I kind of worried. I didn't really even use the steps instructions. I kind of just folded him up as he kind of just folded up by himself. We can place the sword up on top and the sword will combine with other pieces of smaller scale transformers if you're interested, but that's not that big of a deal. And there we go. A nice little small scale hot rod. And maybe we can even demonstrate this little ramp build here with Optimus's trailer flipping this up. Hot Rod can drive on over here and, and park for a few hours free on Optimus's Prime. And that's the deal with Transformers Legacy. What do you think? Pretty good collection to start off with. If you like today's video, please give us a squike, a squirrelib, and a squamit. Let me know what your favorite Transformer is in this new collection. Thank you so much for watching. That's what I have to say about that.